Hello data pros, welcome back to another exciting episode of our Snowflake learning series. In our previous video, we explored Snowflake additions and broke down its pricing model. Today, we'll move further and understand how data is stored in Snowflake's storage layer, using its proprietary columnar storage and micropartitions. This knowledge is crucial, as it serves as the foundation for advanced Snowflake concepts such as time travel, failsafe, zero-copy cloning, partition pruning, and column pruning. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Snowflake uses cloud-based object storage as its underlying storage technology, where all Snowflake data such as database tables, staged files, and metadata are stored. Depending on the cloud platform chosen during your Snowflake account setup, this object storage could be either Amazon S3, Azure Blob Storage, or Google Cloud Storage. Snowflake inherits several benefits from these underlying cloud storage services, such as unlimited storage capacity and high data durability, especially since these cloud storage services typically maintain three redundant copies of your data. Let's first create these Snowflake objects for our practice. When working with Snowflake, it's common practice to stage raw data files before loading them into tables. For instance, executing this put command transfers the file mydata.csv from your local machine to a stage named mystage within Snowflake. Put command generally just compresses the raw file and uploads it to Snowflake storage. Subsequently, this copy into command ingests the data from the staging area into a Snowflake table identified as mytable. Unlike put command, the copy into command performs several steps behind the scenes. Initially, it transforms your data into a columnar format optimized for fast reading. Subsequently, the data is partitioned into manageable chunks, typically ranging from 50 to 500 megabytes in size when uncompressed. Finally, the partitioned data is compressed and stored within Snowflake's storage layer. These small compressed chunks are popularly known as micropartitions within the Snowflake ecosystem. Additionally, to facilitate efficient querying, metadata about each micropartitions is stored in the cloud services layer. Let's try to understand this further. In many traditional non-Snowflake database systems, partitioning is a technique in which large datasets are split into smaller segments called partitions. This is particularly done for improved performance and scalability. In such traditional systems, not all tables are partitioned, and it's up to the user to decide which tables to partition. Additionally, partitioning is typically based on one or more columns within the table. Please take a close look at this dataset. In real-world scenarios, tables often contain a large number of records. However, for the purpose of illustration, I have included only 20 rows. On the left-hand side, we have a one large table containing all the records. On the right, we have the same dataset split into three partitions based on region as the partition key. If a query like this must be run, an unpartitioned table would require scanning all 20 records to finalize the query result. On the other hand, a partition table would only need to skin seven records for the same query, significantly improving query performance, especially when there is large number of records. This process of efficiently eliminating unnecessary data or partitions during query execution is known as partition pruning. It relies on partition metadata, which is specific to each partition. This metadata enables the database system to optimize query execution by identifying and processing only the necessary partitions. Now that we have a good understanding of partitioning and its benefits, let's explore how Snowflake implements this feature with significant improvements. Unlike traditional systems where users are required to manually define partitioning keys and strategies, Snowflake automatically splits data into micropartitions as data is loaded into each table. This eliminates the need for manual intervention. It's worth emphasizing that in Snowflake, micropartitions are automatically created in the natural order at which the data is loaded into the Snowflake table. Snowflake's micropartitions are typically much smaller than partitions in traditional systems, often ranging from 50 megabytes to 500 megabytes in uncompressed size, which is why they are named micropartitions. This fine-grained partitioning enables more efficient data access and query processing. 
While traditional partitions mostly rely on a partition key as metadata, Snowflake goes further by storing additional information such as the range of values for each of the columns in the micropartition, the number of distinct values for each column, and other statistics about the data within each partition. This rich metadata enables Snowflake to make even smarter pruning decisions during query processing, resulting in further performance enhancements. Snowflake's micropartitions are compressed and stored efficiently, reducing storage costs and optimizing resource utilization. This efficient storage mechanism enables Snowflake to handle large volumes of data without sacrificing performance. Snowflake uses a columnar storage format, in contrast to storing data row-wise. This format significantly enhances query performance, especially for analytical workloads involving selective column access and aggregation. For instance, imagine a table with 50 columns. When a query is executed against this table, Snowflake first performs partition pruning based on the WHERE clause conditions. Following this, it performs column pruning based on the fields used in the query. If only 10 columns out of the total 50 are referenced in the query, Snowflake effectively processes only the referenced 10 columns, while pruning the remaining 40. Let's take a closer look at micropartitioning and columnar storage using this example. This diagram is intended only as a small-scale conceptual representation. In real-world data projects, tables often consist of numerous micropartitions, with each one containing a substantial number of records. As evident in this picture, each micropartition belongs to a single table, and each row belongs to a single micropartition. Since column values are stored contiguously close to each other, Snowflake automatically selects the most suitable compression method for each column based on its data type. This optimization contributes to significantly lower on-disk storage size. Snowflake's micropartitions are immutable, meaning once written, they are never modified. You might be curious about what happens when a record is updated. Well, Snowflake typically maintains a start date and end date for each micropartition as part of its metadata. When a record is updated, Snowflake sets an end date for the entire micropartition containing the record, and then recreates a new micropartition with the updated values. This mechanism enables Snowflake to support advanced features such as time travel and fail-safe. It's worth noting that micropartitions with end dates are retained until the time travel plus the fail-safe period elapses, after which they are permanently deleted. That's all for today. Please stay tuned for our next video where we'll explore more advanced Snowflake features. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. We also welcome your questions or thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for watching.